Thank you. I appreciate the time to, to share with you some of the work that's going on in Dauphin. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Wayne Olson. I am the community minister in Dauphin. And uh, when we uh, started our project uh, many years ago, um, we bought the old Western Christian College buildings that many of you know. I have been here before and I have told you about some of the things that we were doing there. It started long before 10 years ago. We started in prayer when the Western Christian College was deciding to move. Uh, we split apart uh, the people that were leaving with the school and the people that were staying. Um, and we prayed for a long time and, and, and uh, it, to our different groups that were leaving and the ones that were staying. And, and the ones that were staying um, had a vision a few years before that because some of the kids at Western Christian College said, you know what? We, we do this work in the community and, and the church isn't praised, or God isn't praised through the church because Western Christian College was getting the credit for the work that was being done and the kids didn't like that. The, the kids wanted God to get the glory. And so we looked at a long time before Western Christian College was still in in Dauphin, we looked at other buildings where we could create a, a, a vision or, or where we could work in our community and make a difference in our community. God said, no, now's not the right time. Now's not the time. And, and, and so we waited and we prayed and we waited and we prayed and, and God answered those prayers when, this, when everybody decided to leave with Regina and there was only 30 of us left. He said, okay, now's the time. You know what, now's the time because there's hardly any of you I will be praised now because of the work that I'm going to set on your hearts to do. And so we bought the old Western Christian College buildings, and, and 10 years ago we started the work that we are doing. Uh, um, as I say, we bought it in 2003. Our vision at that time was to help people in our community with food, clothing, and shelter. Dauphin is a, is a poor community, and so that was our, our, the need in our community. Our mission statement is to practice relevant Christianity by providing life's basic needs to our community. With open arms, we will promote healthy living through education and socialization. Our current activities and, and uh, facilities, we have uh, created the old dorm rooms, have been changed into affordable housing apartments. And, and when we started this 10 years ago, or over 10 years ago now, many of you came to help us tear down walls and build new walls and, and create apartments in the, in the boys' dorm. And, and now we have 20 apartments. And the girls' dorm was changed into dormitory rooms for people who are on low income, that are on social assistance, that only get so much money for housing. That's where we created the dorm rooms. And each dorm room has its own uh, bed, a fridge, and a dresser. So they come and they have some things already prepared for them. So we have started that. Uh, after we moved in, we convinced the Dauphin Community Food Bank to come and can work out of our facility so we could work together. We were, we were housing low-income people, we were housing people that needed help, and, and the food bank was a good fit to move into our facility. Every time the food bank is on, we feed them a meal. And Christmas time coming up, the, the next food bank is on December 17th, and on December 17th we will serve them a full turkey dinner with all the trimmings. Uh, last year we served 160 dinners at Christmas time. It's something that is a need that we do and it's something we like to do. Sorry I, I get emotional when I talk about this because it's a passion that I have. And uh, so uh, we also have a, a free clothing room. You guys have a clothing room and you've been doing that for a long time. We have had a clothing room as well for a long time. We average 3,000 pounds of clothing a month that come into our, our facility and we give away almost all of it. We also share that clothing with uh, a church in Churchill, um, the United Church in Churchill. We send clothing to them that they can give them away. We also send to the Gentle Road Church of Christ in Regina, um, and they have a free clothing giveaway in Regina, and we send clothes there. And we also send to the Union Gospel Mission here in Winnipeg, as well as the Canadian Diabetic Association. So what we don't use doesn't get wasted. It's all used to people who have needs. Um, we have a community indoor playground that we have opened that is open for every day from, well, Monday to Friday from 9 till noon. And it's a, an area where kids can come and play. It's really designed for kids up to the age of six. And they come and they play and they have a great time and parents can get to meet each other. It's, it's a good social area for kids to just be kids. We also use that area that it, we do 20 birthdays a month in that facility 
because kids need a place to play, especially in the winter time. This year it's been a good winter, but some years it isn't. Um, he also has a gymnasium that is used by different community groups. Every night of the week, the gym is used for gymnastics. For um, We open the, the uh, gym up on Tuesday nights for kids, youth in the community to come and play floor hockey so that they have something to do. Small towns, there's nothing to do. You give them activities to do, they will come and they will not get in trouble because they have something they can do. So we do that. The gym gets used. Special Olympics come and uses the gym. The seniors come to use the gym. We, we let it be used around our community. Um, we also have classrooms and meeting spaces. We have uh, the University of Manitoba, the um, Red River Community College hold classes in there. They have done a social work program through our facility. Um, it, it's a great place because it's um, somewhere where everybody can get to in our community to use. Right now we have, we have concerns, and this is where the church in, in, in Winnipeg, and I thank you and, and bring you greetings from Dauphin, because we, we were so excited to hear what you guys are, are helping us with. Our boiler is being replaced right now. A new boiler is $275,000. I, I want you to, to remember that our church is, has 30 members. We're not a big church. We don't have a big church, but we have needs for this facility. And, and our new boiler will cost us $275,000 plus taxes. Um, 150000 of that is already in place, and uh, we are looking to raise the money for the rest of that. We also have the six apartments. I have come and shared that story with you about the six apartments we need to build, and, and because affordable housing is hard to find in our community, uh, we need to build six more apartments. And I've talked to you guys about that, and you guys have wanted to come and help, and some of you have come and helped, and I thank you very much. Um, it's a need, but we had to put that on the hold while we could get our boiler fixed. That's the most important thing because we house um, in the area where we are, are the boiler works in, um, we have about 45 people living in that area. If we don't have the heat, they can't live there, and there's no place in Dauphin for them to go. Um, so it's a, it's a big need, and all our facility, uh, the, our main part of the facility all runs off that one boiler. Um, we are growing to be a God-led, self-sustaining ministry. I, I come not, not asking, I, I'm coming asking for your help, but I also want you to pray for what God is doing in Dauphin. It's been a great ministry, and we want it to be self-supporting. We don't want to have to go out and ask uh, people for money, but today I'm going to ask you for money. There's our boiler. Our boiler is 60 years old, and it's still working. And our, our new boiler isn't in yet, and this one is still working fine, and we are thankful that God has made that happen. Uh, our six two, new two-bedroom apartments. Um, we do have challenges in our ministry, um, sharing God's love with those who have no relationship with our, our fa uh, Father. Um, 60, over 60% 60 of our, our tenants at Parkland Crossing are on social assistance. Over 90% of the men who stay in our dorm rooms are, have been in jail or have had trouble with the law. They have had problems. The society has let them down. The, the justice system has let them down. Their families have let them down. Their fathers have let them down. We live in a, a society where, where we are a fatherless society. And thank goodness for the church that has fathers that can share the father's love with their children and with the people around them. But these people have nobody like that. We become their family. But trying to reach them and building trust with them is an issue. And so it takes a long time to build trust. It takes seconds to, to destroy trust, but it takes years to build trust. And we try to build trust with the people that are coming in to use our facilities, the people who are staying there. It's, it's not easy, but it's something that we do, and it's something that we keep trying to do. Um, we try to use the opportunities that God gives us through the people that are there to share his love with them. That's what we're all about. Our, our, our whole mission of Parkland Crossing is to share God's love with our community. And that's what we try to do. Um, we have given away cars. We've, since I have started at, at Parkland Crossing, we've given away two cars to families in need. We have a community partner that helps us uh, get those cars ready. He provides the safety. He even provides the oil changes and the service on the vehicles for up to two years for the families. We insure them and, and, and keep them on the road for the, the families so that they have a vehicle so they can get their kids around. Uh, we just did that a few months ago. We gave a, a van away to a mother with four children, a single mom with four children. 
She was so excited. She couldn't believe that this could happen to her. And her father, who would come out of town, he lived about uh, 30, 30 minutes from her. Anytime she needed to go anywhere or take her kids anywhere, she would call her father and he would come running in from out of town. And, and it was not an easy situation. And, and the father, when, he got, when this daughter got the vehicle, he said, the church is doing this. And we said, yes, the church is doing this. And he said, why? Because God loves your daughter and she needs some help and we want to help her. He said, and the church is doing this. And I said, yes, absolutely. And he just couldn't get over that the church would go out and do something like that. We stay in contact with that young lady. It's a great thing that we can do because it's a way that we can help in our community. God has, has asked us to, to take what we have and use it in our community. It's the only way that we'll get God's love out in the community is by showing it. And so we try to do that in what we do. We, we need your help. Our goal is to raise $360,000 over the next five years. And, and, and uh, the Winnipeg Church has been great because they have offered us $10,000 over the next five years. And that's wonderful. But if you can help, if you can do a little bit, it, it's not a lot by anybody. If, if 40 individuals were to give us $50 a month for five years, if 80 people could give us $25 a month for five years, we can raise $360,000. It's not a lot. If you, can, if you can give a one-time donation, if you can help us in any way, that would be great. Because we, we, we would need your help. And if you can help, um, we call this the Let Your Light Shine campaign because in Matthew 5, 16, Jesus said, Let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. If you're listening in the prayers this morning, it was prayed for twice this morning already that they may see our good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven. I'm just going to leave you with one more story. And sorry, I've taken more than my allotted time. I want to, to thank you, but I'm going to, this is some of the people that use our facility on a regular basis. Uh, but I want to share a story uh, to you, and, and those of you that were in Weyburn have heard this story too. There, there was, I was leaving work one day, it was a Friday night, it was just before 5 o'clock, and, and there's a, a group that comes in on Friday nights to use our gym, and, and it's a, the, the youth from the Friendship Center, and this little girl saw me leaving the facility, and, and she came running over from the field, she was out running outside, it was a beautiful fall day, and she came, she came running over to me right away. This little girl, I don't know this little girl except through food bank. This little girl, I see her, she, she's uh, nine or ten years old. Um, this little girl, she saw me there, but the only time I've ever seen her is in food bank. I, I serve her at food bank, I say hi to her at food bank, and, and with the kids that are at food bank, I always try to have fun with them. I will serve them like a waiter sometimes, and I will take their food out to them. Uh, this little girl uh, was... was um, known for her spilling her drink. Almost every time that Food Bank was on, she would spill her drink. And we wouldn't get mad at her. We wouldn't say, why, you spilled your drink again? You would have fun with her and say, you know what, that's okay, we can clean it up. It's, it's all right. Anyway, this girl came running to me across the field and, and she said, I need a hug. And I said, well, why do you need a hug? And she said, it's been a bad day. You, you know, I got punched. They were pulling my hair. They've been calling me names all day. I just need a hug. So I, so I gave her a hug. And I said, you know what? It doesn't matter about those kids. Because God loves you. God has made you the person that you are for a reason. Same as you. I said, God made you special. And as she walked away, I said, don't let those kids bother you, because God loves you. And she turned and she said, yes, I know. But sometimes we need reminders. And this is us reminding our community that God loves them. That God loves them. So if you can help, I, I'll be in the back if you want to talk to me, if you want to hear uh, what's going on or if you have questions or anything I'll be in the back in the lobby if you want to talk to me I'll be there I have little sheets if you want to grab one and think about if you can help 
I, I, as I say, the, the church in Dauphin just wants to thank you for being the people that you are and helping us out. Thank you.